Good morning, big girls. This is going to be the Pringles episode, the stack episode. We're talking about four or five of my favorite stacks in fantasy right now. By that, I mean drafting guys on the same team. Typically, it's a quarterback with one of his top weapons, You know, whether it's uh, the wide receiver one or two or his tight end or whatever, right? A pass catching weapon. And what that does is when you draft two players together on the same team, it elevates the ceiling that you can have in a particular week or over the course of the season. A lot of you guys have probably drafted on underdog and done best ball drafts and I've been doing them for years now and there's a lot of literature as they like to say in you know intelligent communities literature and data and a lot of numbers have been run to tell you that stacking is an optimal form of drafting you do want to stack as as often as you can and and that helps out in tournament in tournament fields it helps out in regular leagues as well and since I started stacking best ball I started doing a redraft and I I love doing it that is the easiest tiebreaker for me in the world when I'm trying to decide between a couple guys but I have the quarterback I always want to lead with the wide receiver that he is throwing the ball to they are just weak winning type stacks and we're we're not in today's video we're not going to go into stacks where like I'm not going to say CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott like a fucking of course I like CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott but you can't get CeeDee unless you have a top two three four pick in fantasy so all the guys I have today I don't even and think the first player in the stack goes off the board until like round four, five, six. So everyone is easily gettable. All these are achievable. And based on their actual draft spots in underdog drafts, they line up well to it to the point that it actually like makes sense that you're drafting both of them together on the same team. All right, let's make it quick. Let's make it concise. Let's stack some fucking bread. First stack up on this list is heading down south, down to Florida. Shout out to James Steen, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence, and Christian Kirk. Now, as you can see on this draft board, Christian Kirk went off at the 5'8". Trevor Lawrence went off at the 11-6. So you have plenty of room, plenty of flexibility to grab both of these guys here. Now, what I love about this stack is you're getting the clear one, in my opinion, in this offense. And I think we're probably underestimating uh, the level of production Christian Kirk can put up for us because he was actually on pace for a career year last year before getting hurt. He's already fully recovered. He's back at practice. He's good to go. And he has great chemistry with Trevor Lawrence. We've already seen that now in multiple years. Uh, they got rid of Calvin Ridley. Like he was on pace for a career year while Calvin Ridley was there, seeing almost 140 targets, while Evan Ingram just posted one of the best tight end seasons of all times in terms of receptions. Literally, Zach Ertz has the most receptions of all time in a season, 116. Evan Ingram, 114, all right? All that was happening, Christian Kirk was still on pace for career highs across the board, okay? So the chemistry is there. When I look at Calvin Ridley's departure, what really excites me underneath, when you, when you, when you pop the hood a little bit, Ridley was top three amongst all wide receivers last year in both red zone and end zone targets, all right? That's a big chunk of fantasy production just – getting wide open. Now, T-Law, while he hasn't you know, lived up to those expectations coming into the league, he's been fine for the weapons that are talented enough to earn targets, and that seems to be Kirk. And T-Law will give us a floor, I think, of 4,000 yards and you know, 23, 25 touchdowns. I, I think if he ever does kind of take that step up, I think he'll get better and better as his career progresses. If he does hit that ceiling year, then you're going to get monster production out of him. And they're playing in a division where all three teams are going to be scoring a ton of points. You have Houston with CJ Stroud. You got Indy with uh, Anthony Richardson. You got Tennessee. I don't know if they're going to be scoring a ton of points, but they're going to be a million times more pass heavy than they've been over the last decade under Derrick Henry. All right. And when I look at Christian Kirk and like what he did as a receiver by himself, he ranked number seven overall amongst all NFL wide receivers last year in win rate versus is man so he's still separating at a very very high level and that's per player profiler so christian kirk i think is probably one of the more slept on players in all of fantasy this year and t law down in the 11th round like super fucking okay with that next up we've got this stack out in baltimore of lamar jackson and mark andrews now you can see here this is again a real draft and we're doing real drafts like all throughout the summer probably at this at this point three five six times a week uh if you're in our discord we drop links to it if you're new to underdog this is best ball this is what this draft board is coming from uh you pay three dollars to draft and you don't have to set your lineup throughout the season you don't do waiver wire you don't make trades you just draft a very big team and it automatically starts the best player on your roster in the positions that they have for starters every single week okay it is wonderful you can draft 100 teams before the season actually kicks off so you are super prepared super prepped for your actual drafts and these are people paying so you know the adps are extremely sharp in these drafts so you're you're getting like the real deal fantasy juice in these drafts right so download the underdog app use promo code bdge and it will give you a bunch of uh deposit bonuses on there and once you get onto the app join the discord free to join down below we'll be throwing out links to draft against us draft with us all throughout 
the week. All right. And in this draft, we see from the one spot, he grabbed Lamar Jackson at the 412, Mark Andrews at the 5 1. Like that is the perfect turn right there. I think this passing offense coming into the second year of the system can get better despite coming off of an MVP season for Lamar. Like that is almost the takeaway here. He is somehow consistently the fourth quarterback coming off the board this year after being the MVP after being the two time fucking MVP. Right. And I know Andrews is, it feels like he's a bit risky picking at this point because he seems to get hurt like year in and year out, but he still is even with Zay flowers there, the go-to when he's on the field, right? Like despite playing in just 10 games last year before getting hurt, he still smashed all of his metrics. He was sixth in red zone targets among all tight ends, despite missing like 40% of the year. And when you start to look at like the underlying metrics, I mean, he's top five in pretty much everything. Yards per outrun, number three. Yards per target, number four. Yards per reception, number six. Yards per team pass attempt, number two. Quarterback rating per target, number two. Fantasy points per outrun, number one. Fantasy points per target. Like, it, Mark Andrews is still him when he can stay on, on the field. I know that's, that's probably asking a lot at this point. But, like, in the fifth round, like, in that tier of where all these other guys are going, I love – if you can get Lamar – that's the perfect stack, right? If you can get Josh Allen with Dalton Kincaid, that's a cool stack as well. Uh, if you can get Mahomes, the Kelsey, I think all of these stacks are actually super, super reasonable. I just tend to favor the Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews stack because those two have just phenomenal chemistry. And I look at even down the stretch last year when Mark Andrews was out, Isaiah Likely was great. And I, I love Likely. I think he's, you know, low-key goaded. But most of that probably would have been Andrews' production. And over the final seven games of last year, Isaiah likely averaged over 14 PPR fantasy points per game, right? So if Andrews can, if he can stay on the field, he's going to pay tons of dividends in that fifth round spot. And I'm realizing now we're just stacking up tight ends on the list. The next grouping of players that I absolutely love to draft together, you know, I mentioned CeeDee Lamb and Dak, but how about we take it down a notch in, in the Dallas offense and go Dak and Jake Ferguson together. In this draft, you could see they went off the board back-to-back -back picks. Jake Ferguson at 7'10", Dak Prescott at 7'11". So you can get them both on the turn right now. And when I look at this passing offense, how they're going to run through the air, no pun intended, that doesn't even make sense. It's a catch-22, I suppose. Dak's touchdown total on underdog right now is 32 and a half. He has the second best odds per Vegas right now to lead the NFL in passing touchdowns only behind Patrick Mahomes, right? This offense is going to be extremely, extremely pass heavy given that their roster, unless they trade for another veteran back, given given the roster that they have, they're going to air the fucking ball out. And Lamb is going to eat, but there's not much behind him in terms of like real solidified pass catchers. Like what if Brandon Cooks is actually cooked? I know he had eight touchdowns last year, but that's that, that's volatile. That doesn't tell me that he's still like a, an explosive separation type of receiver. Anyone can score big touchdown numbers if they get lucky in the right parts of the field, but not everybody can separate. So what if Brandon Cooks is cooked and, and the offense just runs through CeeDee Lamb and Jake Ferguson? Cook scoring eight touchdowns was an outlaw. That was his highest touchdown total since 2016. And when you look at Jake Ferguson, he only scored five touchdowns in the regular season last year. He had a massive three touchdown game in the playoffs versus Green Bay. I'm sure you all remember that. But I look at the underlying metrics. They should have like he should have scored a ton more touchdowns. Jake Ferguson led the entire NFL tight ends in red zone targets last year with 25. Now, maybe that's not a good thing that he only scored five touchdowns on it. But like it makes me think that he's a clear part of the game and Dak Prescott trusts him and has that chemistry with him down there in that part of the field. So like the touchdown numbers, I think if there's anywhere they're going to go for Jake Ferguson is going to be up. They're probably going to swap with Brandon Cooks, right? It's kind of insane when you look at just red zone targets in total last year, number one and two. This is not filtered down to just Dallas. This is the entire NFL. CeeDee Lamb ranked number one. Jake Ferguson ranked number two. And Jake Ferguson is a dude who is very involved in the passing game just overall, and that's what you have to look for inside ends. He was asked to pass block on just 5.3% of his snaps. He was a number nine overall in the NFL in tight end slot snaps, number four in yards after catch per reception. He is low key, kind of like a, a, a good tight end in a great situation. And you can get both of them in the seventh, eighth round. That stack is gorgeous. And the last gorgeous stack I have on here is another quarterback and tight end stack. You know, I mentioned Allen and Kincaid. I mentioned Mahomes and Kelsey. And with those guys, you got to pay up a little bit for the QB spot. And I want to stay in that tier of tight ends with Trey McBride, but let's double down with Kyler Murray in the seventh round. All right. So those are two dudes that I would love to have on my team together because we saw what Trey McBride was over the second half of last year with Kyler Murray. When Kyler Murray finally got back onto the field and Trey McBride was on the field and Zach Ertz was not on the team anymore. Those two, their chemistry, I would say, was on par with like the Mahomes-Kelsey chemistry. If you look at the second half of last year, Trey McBride splits 
were number one in the NFL, number one amongst tight ends, fantasy points per game, in targets, all that kind of stuff. When you pace out the second half of last year, Trey McBride was as good as any tight end in the NFL. Kyler trusts him so heavily down there in the red zone, in the end zone. And I think there are double-digit touchdown years incoming for Trey McBride. I think this offense is going to be obviously a lot better than it was last year. I think this team is starting to you know, come into that winning mindset. They showed glimpses of it last year, but they're going to put it together this year. And they bring in Marv. They bring in Marv, obviously. He's going to be a target hog. He's going to be a vacuum. But they also just got rid of a bunch of players. When you start to subtract Hollywood, when you start to subtract Zach Ertz, when you start to subtract all these like minimal players around, it adds up to like 200 targets missing from this offense. So Marv can have a, a buck 30, a buck 40. And I still think McBride can end up with 120, 130 with, you know, uh, 15, end zone ta- uh, 15 end zone targets and really like make the most out of that. So Kyler, I think, is in for a big bounce back year. I think a lot of people are probably sleeping on him. And McBride is, as you may or may not have seen my tight end ranking video Last week, he is my number one. He is my tight end one in redraft this year for that position. Okay, I got to run. Go stack it up. Y'all know what to do. Head over to Underdog. Oh, yeah, and quick announcement. If you do sign up with Underdog using our code BDGE, you will get free access to our draft guide again this summer. Sorry, this only qualifies for people doing it this year. If you signed up last year or the year prior, you do not get access again to it because we've already ran this promo for y'all but anyone that's also signed up from like april 15th till now will also get retroactive access to it okay so if you're on the fence about best ball i promise you it's really really fun but hopefully the draft guide access pushes you even further so code bdge on underdog deposit 10 bucks or more bonuses draft guide best ball that's it love you